I said last time on Red Glasses that I believe the number one disease in America is having a low self-concept, a low view of you. If you didn't see that last week, you might want to go back and review or watch the Red Glasses from last week. Uh, by the way, did you know that there are three U's? There's the you, you think you are. There's the you, others think you are. And then thirdly, there's the you, God knows you are and says you are. The culture around us is very difficult to live in without being impacted negatively by it. The culture says if you want to be a person of significance, you've got to have, first of all, status. Number two, you got to have appearance. Number three, you have to have performance. And so it's a tough road to hoe when you're constantly checking yourself to see how you measure up or people are checking you to see how you measure up. You know, a lot of times we go to the wrong places to get insight and answers to life. I love this story about the man who went to a doctor. The doctor told him, I'm sure I have the answer to your problem. The man said, I hope so, doctor. I should have come to you a long time ago. The doctor asked him, where did you go before? Well, I went to the pharmacist. The doctor snidely remarked, well, what kind of foolish advice did he give you? Well, he told me to come see you. So a lot of times we go uh, to the wrong places. So what does God think about you? And I hope you'll memorize this. Listen to this. First of all, the scripture says God made you. In Ephesians 2.10, he said, you're my masterpiece. I didn't make anything any finer, any greater than you. You're the apple of my eye. Do you feel that way about you? Number two, he said, I love you. I love you. Oh, I know all about you. I know your secrets and I know everything. Listen, but he says, look, you need to know this. I'm crazy about you. I love you. I may not like the things you've done or do, but I love you. Number three, he says, I sent my son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for you, to forgive your sins, to give you a new start in life and give you a home in heaven someday. Number four, he says, I've gifted you. Number five, he said, I've got a plan, a literal plan for your life. And so this is key as you think about this. Your self-concept will be determined by what you think the most important person in your life thinks of you. So if you look at my little triangle here, the diagram, let me repeat that. How you view you, your self-concept, will be determined by what you think the most important person who is that in your life thinks about you. If you put any human being at the apex of that triangle, you'll never find a human being able to highly value you all the time. So the question then becomes, are you going to choose the world's view of you or God's view of you? You remember what he said? He said, I made you. I love you. My son died on a cross for you. That's how much I love you. I've gifted you. And I have a plan for your life. And so there are a couple of things I hope you do with this little talk today. Number one, here's the question you need to ask yourself. Is Jesus in your life? Is he in? If he's not in there, just say, Jesus, come in. Clean me up and help me to become the person you've always wanted me to be. Number two, will you allow what he thinks about you to be the controlling factor in shaping your life and how you view you? Number three, memorize the five life-changing uh, thoughts that I just gave you. Memorize them, put them on a card, review them every day. And let me tell you, what you will discover is this. You will learn to love you. You think about that.